<laughs> that later on. Well, I'm saying. Last night we had two number one quarterbacks, number one draft picks facing off, which is fun. We're going to have those matchups for the next 12 weeks, which is exciting for the first time. Up next, though, we have an undrafted quarterback in a number one pick. An NFC East showdown at the link in week one. Tony Romo was 22 of 23, targeting running backs and tight ends. And Sam Bradford had the fourth highest second half completion percentage of any quarterback. Philly, a five point favorite at home. Stephen A., you're the mayor of Philly. What are you thinking? Well, I wouldn't call myself the mayor of Philly. I call South you. Beach, yes. Oh, so you, uh, you want to be but, South Beach. But, but, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I got a lot of homeboys in Philly. You know, that's my second home. So we'll roll with that. Here's you the you deal. do have the key to the city of South Beach, which should scare a lot of people in South Beach. But it doesn't scare I'll believe yeah. that when I see it. They yeah. welcome me all the time. Yeah. But I will say this. When I look at the Philadelphia Eagles in this particular game, we know the matchups. We know that DeMarco Murray gets to face, <clears throat> excuse me, he gets to face his old team. We know that Tony Romo has to go up against the Eagles without the services of Des Bryant. We understand that defensively, the, the Dallas Cowboys defense has to deal with the Eagles offense without Hardy, without McLean, without Skandrick. Okay, we get all of that. But here's the reason I am picking the Philadelphia Eagles to win this game. Shocked. On Sunday afternoon. I will unapologetically say that although it is just week two, and it's a long, long season with 14 games to go after this one, this I consider to be a must-win scenario for the Philadelphia Eagles. If Dallas wins this game, they already have the tiebreak in their favor because they've beaten the Eagles. But they would also be two games up because they won their opener and the Eagles lost, which means they'd be 2-0. and The Eagles would be 0-2, and they'd essentially have a two-and-a-half game lead over the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm -hmm. When you combine that with the fact that all those individuals I've mentioned, DeMarco Murray switching teams, being on the Eagles' side, with Hardy, with Skandrick, with McLean and those boys, out. And the Eagles still find a way with Des Bryant, out. And the Eagles still find a way to beat you in Philadelphia on your home turf without those individuals at their disposal. I think psychologically it could be a devastating blow to the Eagles. Mm -hmm. They have to win this game. Also, let's keep this in mind. It's not only important that they win this game, but it's how they win this game. Because one of the things I was proud of watching the Eagles on Monday night, the Atlanta Falcons, inspired by their new coach, Dan Quinn, new system. Mm -hmm. He's a player's guy, relates to them. Coach yep. Legion of Boom is a defensive coordinator mm -hmm. just last year. Yep. Those boys, Atlanta, looked like rough riders yeah. in the first half on Monday. Finally. I'm not used to seeing their defense look like that. And the Eagles still turned around in that second half, roared right back, took the lead before losing it once Julio Jones and Matt Ryan connected on a 44 yard setting up the game winning field goal. All right, I thought that was Bradley Fletcher out there for crying out loud and it turned out to be Byron Maxwell. Mm -hmm. Neither here nor there. The point is this. If you're the Philadelphia Eagles, you've shown that you can get punched in the mouth. How are you going to respond? You responded in the second half. You didn't respond in the first half. Dallas can't come out there, especially shorthanded and punch you in the mouth. You not only need to win, you need to punch the Dallas Cowboys in the mouth and make sure they recognize they better get these boys back if they want to mess with y'all because without them, they can't. That's the kind of message I think the Eagles need to send to the Dallas Cowboys tonight, in order on um, Sunday night, s Sunday afternoon, in order to make this as interesting as I think it's going to be. I believe they will, and I believe the Eagles win this football game over the Dallas Cowboys 31-23. Well, I thought you were going to do like 42-12 to, to or something 31, the way you were talking. 31-23. 31-23. Sass. That's what we'll sass. go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> you know what, Molly? What? Stephen A's probably right about this one. Okay. Every point he made was just oh, dead on, deep, God. insightful, brilliant. I'm going to disagree yeah. anyway. But I just have this this weird, crazy feeling. Okay, this where is inexplicable it? Real, I, I don't even know where it is. I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> but I just have this feeling mm. that my man, Tony Romo, Undrafted is going to Tony. pull off yet another 
major or minor miracle in Philadelphia. I just have this feeling that my Cowboys are going to steal a game they have absolutely no business winning. And the reason that I think this is going to happen, though I, I wouldn't bet a penny on it, but the reason I think it's going to happen is exactly the reason you said it's not going to happen. And that is every last ounce of pressure is on the home team. My Cowboys will go in with absolutely no pressure and no expectation. Who, who in their right mind would think that the Dallas Cowboys, as short-handed, handicapped as they are now, no Dez and no defensive firepower, how in the world could they go in there and even hope to hang in with Chip Kelly's vaunted, high-powered Philadelphia Eagles? It just can't happen. But it will because the pressure's on the home team, and you know better than I how those fans can turn on that home team at a moment's notice when especially the hated Dallas Cowboys are in full view. And if they're hanging in a game, that crowd's gonna start to get a little flustered <laughs> and finally out and out angry at the home team, and I think it starts to turn on them. And here's why I do like my, my Cowboys psyche going into Philadelphia. I don't know if you've noticed, but my Dallas Cowboys have won nine straight away games. Nine straight on the road by my Dallas Cowboys, by far the longest streak in the National Football League. Wow, they won all eight of their road games last year. And they another, can travel. another quick point of order, they have now won two straight years against Chip Kelly in Philadelphia. Do you remember two years ago? I thought it was the biggest upset of the entire NFL regular season when my Cowboys, as woeful as they were on defense, went into Philadelphia against that next level, fast break offense installed by the genius Chip Kelly. And what happened? 17 to three happened. Chip Kelly's offense managed three points against a Dallas Cowboy defense. Remember on that Sunday night in New Orleans? They gave up a record, remember the record yardage that they gave up, a record, it, it was just, it was disastrous. 17 to three that time. Then remember what happened last year? On, on Thanksgiving, the Eagles went in and carved up my Cowboys like Thanksgiving night turkeys. Remember that game? What was it, 38 to? That was bad. 38 to 23, really? Thanksgiving. I'm sorry, that was 33 to 10 on Thanksgiving. Yes. Then two weeks later, they go right the wrong. My Cowboys went to Philly. Thanks to Bradley Fletcher, I love that. And it was 38 to 27 Dallas. Mm -hmm. So even without Des Bryant, what happened at the end of the Giants game? 76 yards and a touchdown happened, and 72 yards and a touchdown happened, thanks to Tony Romo and an amazing array of receivers that he has, weapons that he has, without Des Bryant. Because I'm gonna remind you, I'm sure Chip knows this, Joseph Randall can also catch the ball. Lance Dunbar can really catch the ball. Listen, Darren McFadden can catch the football and run with the football. And, of course, there's a Cole Beasley and there's a Terrence Williams and, Jason need I not Witten. mention, Jason Witten and Gavin Escobar. And all of a sudden you're looking around and you're saying, wow, that's a lot of people to have to deal with this without Des Bryant. So I just have this feeling that I still have my offensive line. My defense played way better than I thought it would against Eli Manning. He only got in the end zone one time. Probably should have gotten in twice, but only once. And then coming off a Monday nighter that had to kick Philly right in the stomach. And it's hard on a short week to get back up for the Dallas Cowboys, right? Because DeMarco's got to be thinking, yeah, I got, I got 21 million guaranteed, but will money buy me happiness here in the role I have? I got nine yards on eight carries at Atlanta, really? And Sam Bradford, he took some shots in Atlanta. Are you sure he's going to be okay for this game? Because he's, he's probably still sore today. I will bet you after being out of football for two years, he's still sore. And then that little Cody Parkey, that little kicker that you, he, he's a problem. I got to tell you, he's become an increasing problem. I think he so will be the problem so at the end of this so game. So Cody's a problem? Yes, he is. Well, really? you, have you been watching? The Dallas Cowboys? I try not to, actually. Yeah. But I will say. Okay, well, let me do my prediction sure. here. Go ahead, because so I was yeah, waiting I for that. Score. I it's mean, I was waiting for to that. a missed field goal by right. Cody Parkey. I'm going to predict it right oh, here, right now. It on him. Yeah, it's okay. going to come down to him just as it did at Atlanta. Okay. And he missed again. Yeah. I got 31 to 30. Little, little Tony Romo. To 30. Nothing yeah. to lose, everything yeah. wow. to gain for wow, the Cowboys. Because you have a feeling? Yep.
That's your argument? Because you got a feeling. I told you, you made all the best arguments. I mean, what the hell is this? I got a feeling. Woo! I am Because tonight's going to Come on, you can play your intuition once in a while. We all do. All you got to come back at me is to say silly songs. What are you talking about? You said you got a feeling. I don't have to come back at you with anything. I told you, you got a feeling. You got a feeling. I told you. What does that mean? What more can I give you? I'm just saying, you got a feeling. That's your argument. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Wait, wait, wait. How are you out on a limb? Am I out on a limb here or not? They're, they're five-point underdogs on the road. Oh, please, that doesn't count. We all know that with division rivalries, anything can happen. You are out on a limb when you pick the Dallas Cowboys to go to the Super Bowl. And that's out on a limb because that ain't happened. Hey, I was, out, it, wait, 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 wait. I was out on a limb when I picked them to win the East last year. That was out on all a limb. All right, that's fine, too. Yeah. That's fair. And you were out on a limb when you picked them to go to the Super Bowl. Okay. This ain't out on a limb. This is a division rivalry. Anything can happen. Oh, okay. Come on no, now. Anything can happen. I just don't think that they're going to beat the are Eagles. You but you got a feeling. Pick? Not even a little are bit. Are you having a little doubt? Did I uh, Playing some seeds you, in the back of your mind. I will give you. That you have a feeling. Yeah. That you have a feeling. Yeah. You know That's what? the seeds that you planted. You I, got a feeling. He, he I'm gonna... just planted seeds with that kicker yeah, thing. I did. He I was. Did. Really? He was in the wait, wait a second. You know, I love you so much, man, that I'm going to give you a break here. I'm going to give you a chance on national TV to switch your pick to the Cowboys. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you a chance. You can do it because I see it in your eyes. Every every line that I uh, spoke, your eyes uh, got a little wider and I a little have, wider. I'm, and you're I'm, like, I'm supremely confident that this is going to win this game. Well, change your score. Go up. No, make why, it 40 to 10. Let me ask you a question. Come on. Why does the score matter to you? At the end of the day, it's conviction. It's the end of the day. It's conviction. It indicates how strongly you I believe in your My pick. conviction is 3123. That's all it is? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Yours I, is see, is that an, I have no conviction. Is that not a, I, I, what, is that yeah. not a W? Is um, that not a W? Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, it's must win for okay. the Philadelphia Eagles. I believe must it is. Win. I really believe it is. Or it's over. They're going to have to disband after this game no. if they lose. No, I think they'll oh, be a you? wild card if they don't win this game. Okay. When I was watching the Eagles, you know what I thought of you, Scoop? Because I saw flashes of that offense. Just That's little about flashes. That's about all I can have. <laughs> All right, we're fired up for this Cowboys Eagles game. Can wait on Sunday, as you can tell. I thought I made and a And Skip good suggested in the meeting that we hear from the Twitter faithful. Yeah. We want to hear from you guys. Use the hashtag Battle at the link and send us your prediction for the game. Keep voting throughout the show. We'll reveal your in, uh, winner. Excuse me, a little later on after the break. It's the battle for AFC East supremacy. Rex versus Brady. Who wins in Buffalo Sunday? That is the game we are picking next. And we've got plenty more hot topics on this final version of First Take before we head into the weekend. TGIF, check out the rest of our discussion by going to IG right now and checking out our rundown.